In more local coverage now, we often do stories about the Catholic Church, but there is another Christian denomination that's been in the news lately. That's the Episcopal Church, which is celebrating its 225th anniversary. More on that in a minute. Joining us now, Bishop Nicholas Nisley of the Episcopal Church of Rhode Island. Good morning. Thanks for coming in this morning. Thanks. Glad to be here. You just came back from uh, the uh, General Convention, right, a couple mm -hmm. of weeks ago, and uh, some big news in the church about uh, Mike Curry, the first uh, African-American elected as the president. Uh, talk about that. He's our presiding bishop, and it is the first time we've elected that way. It's also the first time in over a century we've had an election on the first ballot. The bishops of the Episcopal Church were sequestered in the cathedral in Salt Lake City, and it took us all of about 20 minutes oh, wow. to make our vote. It was pretty overwhelming. We, we spoke on the phone yesterday about the, the lot of things have happened that haven't happened in about a century in your church, and we spoke about uh, the uh, same-sex marriage, which is something that uh, your church has taken more of a, I would say not a, an aggressive, but a progressive stance on, and you've been uh, more... Um, uh, forward thinking in the last couple of years? Well, it's been a conversation that's been ongoing for about 40 years in our denomination. And here in New England, we were, I guess, a little bit ahead of where the rest of the country has been. But it's pretty gratifying to see the Supreme Court decision. Uh, as Episcopalians here in Rhode Island, since my election about three years ago, we have been welcoming gay and lesbian Christians into the community in a very open way and including them by blessing their relationships and asking them to live according to the discipline of Christian life. Let's also talk about the 225th anniversary of the church and uh, this is a big year and there's uh, a lot of things that are celebrating this uh, milestone. Talk about some of the things the church is doing. One of the things that we're very focused on is reconciliation and one of the greatest events of reconciliation, taking two things that wouldn't normally be included together is water and fire. So we're working with water fire September 12th. We'll be participating in that event. The Episcopal Diocese will be providing entertainment. We'll be involved in the planning of the actual event. And it's a way of celebrating our 225th anniversary and a new moment in our church history. We're opening new congregations, we're planting uh, new communities around the state, and it's kind of a new moment for us, and we're pretty excited about that. Talk about growth in the church, because it, we often have stories about how there's a decline in participate, mm -hmm. <laughs> precipitation, easy for me to say. Uh, is that not the case that you're finding in, in, in your denomination? We're starting to see, we've been in decline, but we're seeing the decline end and we're starting to see some small growth. Here in Rhode Island, we're seeing growth in a couple of new congregations. Uh, we have one congregation that we planted in Pasco that surprised us. We were expecting about 12 people the first Sunday. We had 80. Uh, that congregation is growing rapidly. In fact, it's going to be added to our ranks probably this fall. We have two other new congregations, one that mostly is for people on the street just in downtown Providence, and another one that's for children who have autism. And families would like to be able to worship in a liturgy that would be appropriate for their children. Uh, both of them are showing real signs of growth. And we've got Sunday schools that are just packed uh, in parts of the state. All right, well, great. So an exciting time in your church. Thanks so much for coming in and sharing that with us this morning. And for more information on that special water fire, you can just go to our website, WPRI.com.